Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to go through some basic word problems, and by basic I don't necessarily mean easy, I know word problems can be kind of hard for people. When I say basic, I mean like when you start with word problems, these are usually like the first ones that you do. So that's why they're they're basic, they're like the, the starting point. So, um, okay, I know word problems make people nervous, word problems are all about decoding. So I'm going to try really hard in this video to kind of help you decode and figure out what information you need. Now, in a previous video, I showed this list of terms. I developed this list. If you don't know this list, you might find it helpful to pause. So one of the key things you have to do with word problems is you have to take the situation and translate kind of the English into math. And some of these words are going to be the words that are used in the problems. So you might just want to pay attention to this. Now, there's one thing I want to add on to this the equal sign. So in the previous video I talked about we didn't have the equal sign in there. So words that would indicate the equal sign would be something like equal or equals, equivalent, the same as or is. Those are all words that are indicating where the equal sign is. So I actually think one of the key things with word problems is to figure out where does the equal sign naturally fall. If you can figure that out then you're going to make a really good step towards where you need to go. Okay. So let's start with this first one. So Juan is memorizing a list of names for a history class quiz. So far he has memorized eight of the names, which is one fourth of the list. So how many names are on the list? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is figure out what information is actually relevant for the problem. So it's telling us that he's memorized eight of the names and that is one fourth of the list. So like I said, the first thing you want to figure out is where does the equal sign kind of fall? So I see the word is here and this is actually kind of, this is one fourth of the list. So I want to re like think through this whole problem. So if I wanted to summarize, this would be eight names is one fourth of the list. So now by reframing this whole problem, this actually is a mathematical expression right here. So eight names is, this is actually telling me just the number eight, eight. And then we have is, is is going to be the equal sign. And then we've got this last part that says one fourth of the list. So I don't know how many names are on the list, right? That's what I'm trying to look for. How many names are on the list? So if this is one fourth of the list and I don't know how many total are on the list, what should I call kind of the, the total number? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's going to be this part right here. That's going to be X. That's our unknown. So now I've got to just interpret this last part. One fourth of the list. What does of mean? Well, if I go back to my handy dandy list of is referring to multiplication. So what this is talking about is one fourth times x. That's what this whole second part here means. One fourth times x. So notice what finding the equal sign did for us. It actually helped us to break this problem into little chunks so that we could figure out each part. So the tricky part here was figuring out what does this mean. But you know this side was was a lot more straightforward. Okay and so once you get that now it's just a matter of you know now we can solve. So I want to get rid of the fraction here. So to get rid of the fraction I'm just going to multiply by the denominator on each side. So x is going to equal 32. So there's 32 names on that list. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Corey wants to rent a truck for the day and cost $30 for the base fee plus 23 cents for each mile driven. And when he returned the truck, he owed 41.19. So how many miles did he drive? So in this case, I want you to once again figure out where would the equal sign naturally go in this. And you might want to think about kind of like what we did in the last problem where we kind of summarize the situation in a sentence. If you want to pause for a second to just think about this and, and take a stab at it and then hit play when you're ready, go for it. So the cost of the truck is $41.19. So this is really me taking the whole situation and we'll have to fill in what the cost of the truck is in a moment, but in a nutshell, this is kind of what, what it comes down to. And again, it's all about figuring out where does the is naturally fall. So notice there was no equals in this, right? It's me 
summarizing the situation where I find where that equals naturally falls. So this was what it came out to be. So this is kind of how I can think about this. So what this means is I've, I've already figured out the second half of this equation. And now I just have to figure out how do I represent the cost of the truck? Well, it's $30 for the base fee. And then you've got plus, which is, you know, addition, 23 cents for each mile driven. So it's 23 cents per mile. So that's going to be, and we don't know how many miles he drove. So that's going to end up being 30 plus 0.23 X. So it's going to be set up like this. And so now we can just solve it as usual. So um, as I solve this, so, you know, if you're in my class, you have to be able to do this without a calculator. So you can get this started. And then just as a reminder, so if you aren't sure what to do with the decimals here, you can always just opt to move them. So I'm going to move all of them just two over like this. So then I get 23x equals 11, 19. You can do that, or if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. Now, when you actually do the division for this one, so you are going to find a remainder. So if you wanted to just like round up or round down, depending on how you deal with the, the remainder. Um, so the, the decimal answer of this would be 48.65. And then if you wanted to round that up, you could say that that's just like 49 miles. So this would be the exact answer. This would be rounded. Okay. So now let's, let's go on to the next one. So this one is a little bit complicated. So a, a cafe serves both tea and coffee. On Sunday, the cafe sold 95 teas and coffees combined. The cafe sold nine more coffees than teas. How many teas were sold on Sunday? So there's, there's kind of a lot when you look at this one. And so this is again, kind of coming up with a game plan and figuring out where does that equal sign go? So you might want to think about this for a second and you can pause and then hit play when you're ready. So as I look through this, the big thing here is this idea of the combined number. The teas and the coffees came out to be 95 and we're trying to figure out how many of each were sold. So the, the way I'm going to kind of structure this is I'm going to start with just the coffees plus the teas. Those came out to 95. This is where the equal sign falls. So start there. Now I know that there's this other piece of information, but like I said, the first thing you really want to focus on is where's that equal sign. Then figure out what do you do with the rest of the information. So now it says the cafe sold nine more coffees than teas. So we don't know how many teas were sold. So if I don't know how many teas were sold, what should I call teas? The teas are unknown, so that would be an X. So now notice that they're talking about coffees in terms of teas. So all of this, all of this right here, this is talking about coffee in terms of teas. So nine more coffees than teas. So you take the number of teas that they sold, and then you need nine more than that. And that's how many coffees were sold. So how would you represent coffees? Coffees would be X plus nine. So I've got the X for the teas and I've got the X plus nine for the coffees. So that's how I'm going to represent that more coffees, then t's. So there's the setup. Now from here I can solve as usual. So this will be 2x plus 9 equals, oops, 95. And now I can subtract off the 9 to get 2x equals 86. Divide both sides by 2 and I get x equals 43. Now they're asking how many teas were sold. So does X represent tea or does it represent coffee? It represents teas. Remember, we set that up up here. So 43 teas were sold. All right, so LaToya bought a new sweater and a pair of jeans for $64. The jeans cost $8 less than the sweater. How much was the sweater and how much were the jeans? So the thing I want to point out here is this is actually very similar to the last problem. It's talking about, you know, combining two things to get a total. So 
you have to kind of break those out into pieces. So I highly recommend that you actually pause the video here and you try a similar approach to what we did in the last one and see if you can set the whole thing up. Hit play when you're ready. So in this case, we have the sweater plus the jeans. That's going to equal $64. So there's where our equal sign is. So now it says the jeans cost $8 less than the sweater. So I don't know how much the sweater costs, right? So the sweater I want to represent as X and the jeans have to be uh, put in terms of the sweater once again. So for the jeans, maybe I'll just write it over here since I'm kind of out of space. For the jeans, I'm going to take the cost of the sweater, but now I need to take $8 away from that. So I'm going to take X minus 8. So now I've got how to put this in for the sweater and for the jeans. So now I can fill in the rest of this problem. So the sweater was X and the jeans were X minus eight and that's gonna come out to 64. And so once again, now I can solve as usual. So I can um, take my like terms like this and then I can add eight to each side. So I get two X equals 72, divide both sides by two and I get X equals 36. Now. You have to be careful when you get to the end of the problem. So it says how much was the sweater and how much was the jeans or how much were the jeans. So um, the sweater, that was what was represented by X, right? That's what we found right here. So it's $36 for the sweater. And then for the jeans, I need to take, remember this right here, X minus eight. So 36 minus eight comes out to 26. So it's going to be and $26 for the jeans. Okay, so there are red, orange, and green balls in a ball pit, and in total there are 39 balls. There are 12 more orange balls than red balls. There are nine more green balls than red balls. How many are there of each color? So once again, slightly different situation from before, but I want you to figure out where would the equal sign naturally fall. So think about that first and then hit play when you're ready. So in this case, this is talking about if I combine the three ball types, this is going to come out to 39. So there's where the equal sign falls. Now for the rest of this, it's now just figuring out how do I express the red, the orange, and the green balls. Now the thing to notice with this is that the orange balls are being expressed in the terms of the red balls and the green balls are being expressed in terms of the red balls. So we don't know how many red balls there are. However, since everything else is being expressed in terms of the red balls, that means that the red balls are gonna be represented by X. Okay, so now if I'm told that there, for the orange balls, there are 12 more orange balls than red balls, I start with X and then how many, how do I adjust that? Well, 12 more means addition. So I take the original X amount plus 12. Now what about for the green balls? Well, once again, I start with the red balls and then I have nine more. So I have X plus nine and then we know that that equals 39. And so now I can go ahead and work through this. So this comes out to three X plus 21 equals 39. I can subtract off the 21 to get three X equals 18 and divide each side by three. So I get X equals six. Okay. So now remember, what did X stand for in this case? X stood for the amount of red balls. That was our starting point, right? So there are six red balls. And then for the orange balls, so that was this part right here, right? X plus 12. So uh, for X plus 12, so six plus 12 is going to be 18. So there's gonna be 18 orange balls. And then for the green balls, we said there were X plus nine. So six plus nine is 15, so that's 15 green balls. And so that's how you break that one down. And so that's all I have for this particular one. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can feel free to always drop me a line. Hopefully this was helpful and I'll talk to you guys next time.